Men see fives as fives, sixes as sixes, and sevens as sevens. Women see fives as zeros, sixes as zeros, sevens as zeros, eights as zeros, nines as like fives, and tens as tens. Like that's how they, they start to see men, and they start to see these things disproportionately. We've done on this show ad nauseum the, the delusional calculator where we have women come in there. We ask them what the, I'll average, bring that up in a bit. Yeah, what the average height they want. They all want six feet tall or taller. How much they want these men to make. Uh, six feet tall or taller. That's the top 14% of the population. They want to make $100,000 a year. That puts you in the top 26% of the Allie's population. Allie's laughing because it's all she it's never so you, true. You, you, never is, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 top, the top 26% of the population, they want them to be obese. Well, n- men who aren't obese, that's only 25% of men that are not obese. And you want them to not be married. Well, guess what, ladies? All the good-looking guys who are fit have make $100,000 a year. They're, a lot of them are fucking married. By the way, 30% of the men on Tinder are married. 30 fucking percent. That is like one of the most outrageous statistics. For some of you, it's probably not. Or if you're uh, an exotic dancer or whatever, you're probably like, yeah, I, I thought it would be 50 percent. <laughs> but for most, for me, I just like it's just where society has broken somewhere. If 30 percent of men on Tinder are married, that is mind boggling to me. Right. They're not even considering the concept of monogamy. Now, everything I just said, it does sound like a lot of gloom and doom. And what my question to, for you is. Who here believes that in the future you would be comfortable with a traditional monogamy? This is something that you're looking for, a traditional monogamy. Jessica. Hello, closed on his end, closed on your end. Jessica, would you be comfortable or like today with a traditional monogamous relationship? Are you in a relationship right now? I would think I would be. Oh, closer to the mic, closer to the mic. There you go. Yeah, I think Eat so. Yes, monogamy is something I okay, but hold on. be mad about. <laughs> so let's not think of it theori- theoretically. Do you think that you the, the concept of you living in Scottsdale, finding a man that you find attractive enough to be in a relationship with, but he's not so attractive that it's going to, he's going to have a hard time not cheating, stepping out on you, th- those things like that. Do you think, do you think traditional mon- monogamy is the only way for you to go forward? No. You don't? What, what, uh, what other alternatives do you see? Um, maybe... An open relationship, yeah. maybe, like, but, but with like trust and honesty. Okay, you know, n- not mm. hiding it and not you know doing it behind their back, mm. but like open about it. And you'd be it'd be open on your end as well. Correct. Okay, so that's what you look for. So, so polyamory. That's yeah. the word for it. Sorry, okay, it's, it's, now it's, I know. It's, <laughs> it's the it's the Greek word that means poly means Greek. many. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Mono no, poly. Many cool. loves. Cool. Uh, Alexis, what do you think? I'm not a monogamy type of person. Yeah. Um, I definitely, I believe in communication and comprehension on all partners. You know, it doesn't mean I'm against monogamy. It just means I don't feel uh, it's right for me. You're, you're, are you still filming studio adult work now? Absolutely. Okay. Now in do- I'm contracted with browsers. Beautiful. So in doing so, have you ever had a situation? Because we talked about this with Sarah before where she's in a relationship and she still films. Have you had that? Have you ever done that before? Yeah, ha- I certainly have. Did that ever make your co- or partner feel uncomfortable or was your partner in the industry? Like how did that work? Um, one partner, I think, definitely made him feel uncomfortable because of his friends saying, hey, this is your chick. Da, yeah. Da, 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 da. And, uh, you know, that's an insecurity issue on him, not my problem. Yeah. Uh, the other person did not have an issue at all with it. But, you know, it's just, you know, just different people for different things. So, but, but you just, monogamy is not something that you want to do in the future? Uh, n- nothing. Yeah, I've, I've had it in the past. And I know for a fact that there's just something that I'm not, I, I don't, I don't even want to live with the other person. Got it. I, I, I'm a very, like, lone wolf. I'm, I'm very comfortable. I'm, I've. I've got my own things going on, and yeah. uh, you know they could be a neighbor, but I'm not really interested in living with the actual person. Same. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Katie, what about you? I could I could do a monogamous relationship for sure. Okay. Now, mm-hmm. what are the scenarios by which that would happen? What do you think? Um, what does that look like to you? So, definitely wouldn't happen in Vegas. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. So it would be if let's. So I'm from Calgary. It would be back home dating some guy who works in trades. Some like. It would be a completely different scenario than dating somebody who's you know, out in Vegas okay, in the okay, scene. So, so whenever I hear women say this, and I, I totally appreciate this, and again, if this was 1986, I would believe you. The problem is yeah. there's no way you'd have a wandering eye for the plumber that you're, you have, you're, da- you're married to a fucking plumber. When you say the trades, that's what you mean. You mean a plumber, electrician, a carpenter, or maybe even like a vocation, like accountant, attorney, whatever. Teamster. And, a oh. teamster, whatever. <laughs> and, you're, and you're saying from that standpoint, all of the stimulus that you see on social media would not cause you to stray at all? No. You don't think so? No. Okay. Now, would you also be open to the possibility that that doesn't work out and that you don't have a traditional monogamous relationship? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, what, what would that look like? Uh, so, personally for me, I, I have no interest in hooking up 
with other people if I'm really if if I'm into you, I'm into you. You're my person. Um, what about just to be petty? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> and then send him a picture. Of you get pissed off. <laughs> no. Uh, hey, you remember when you didn't call me before? We Here's Tyrone. Have, Fuck off. We should ask that later. Have you ever hooked up out of spite? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. yeah. That's a good one. That's one of the. There's what, actually the there's there's yeah. actually an article on that recently. Right, well, yeah. say, write, write, write that down. Write that down. Yeah. I, I love that idea. Okay, so uh, you're not so it would be a polygynous relationship for you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, got it. Sabrina. I would prefer to have a monogamous relationship at this time. Yeah. Yeah. Would you be comfortable with any other type of relationship? Or just you'd just rather be single? Are you in a relationship right now? I am not in a relationship uh-huh. right now. Um, I think I'd be open to the idea with the right person, but I would take a lot of time. Yeah. To a be comfortable with like a polygynous relationship. Sure. And you don't think you'd be interested in like other dudes in the relationship? Or would you? What do you mean? So a polyamorous relationship would be you see other men and she and he sees other women. Sure. A polygynous relationship would be like you and both of you see other women. Um, a polyandrous okay. relationship would be the two of you see other men. I guess I'm, <laughs> I'm really fine with other. If it, I guess I wouldn't want to say polyamory. I would say more like an open relationship mm-hmm. in the sense that I would want to keep my commitments to one person on like a yeah. deeper foundational level. For sure. Um, but maybe sexually explore with other people. Okay. That's it. There we go. Let's go to the mm-hmm. commune. The Let's do yeah. it. The sex commune. Let's do it. All right. Let's raise the children in the village. All right. Uh, Allie, what about you? Um, yeah, no, I'm fine with monogamy. I'm also fine with poly, but I prefer more of like a hierarchy poly. Um, so there's a there's a main girl and a unicorn. No, that's a triad more. So I mean, like, I'm da- if I'm if I have a boyfriend and he wants to like sleep with other chicks on the side, that's fine as long as our relationship comes first. Got yeah. it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Honesty yeah. and tr- like yeah. trust. So yeah. So so let's talk about this. I again, I'm going to keep recommending this until all you guys fucking read this book, The Evolution of Desire by David Buss. It is the fun- most phenomenal. Read book. the 2016. Yeah, version. The, the the newest one, the yes. 2016 version. When you read the book, one of the things they talk about is women are far more interested, like two to one, all the way to ten. To one more interested in the concept of men procuring resources than the other way around. Like so, they would they would look at. There's one study they would do where they would take a man and they would put him Rolex watch with a suit on. Then they have a guy with a t-shirt and jeans, and the same guy dressed as a McDonald's worker. Same thing with women. They would have a woman. She has the Cartier watch, the Cartier bracelet, the really nice gown, the the, the Vera Wang, and the fucking uh, seven hundred fifty thousand dollar Himalaya. And then right here, she's just in like a, a sundress, and right here, she's in a McDonald's uniform. For women, the the they would ask. What is the likelihood of you considering dating or getting to a relationship with any of these three men? The man at the top, it was like 83% of the women said yes. The mm-hmm. man in the middle, it was like 17%. And no one said that they would consider being in a relationship with a guy in a McDonald's uniform. Zero. Yeah. His ability, or rather his status, which indicated how much money he could make, or his ability to procure resources, or his competency, was by far the most important indicator. And as women got older, it actually became more, a, a more of an important indicator than how strong his jaw was or how tall he was. For women, for men, they didn't give a fuck if she worked as a mechanic or an astronaut or a firefighter or a sandwich, or, artist. Or, or sandwich artist. If she was hot, they could not have cared less. They absolutely, there was no difference between the girl that had the Himalaya and the girl who worked at McDonald's. Men found, all, men found them attractive. So that's the difference. It's a massive difference. Now, here's the, here's the thing that happens. When we talk about like a, a, a patriarchy or a hierarchy, when you deal with that situation, if one gender is so concerned with the other gender's ability to procure resources... Wouldn't it make sense for that second gender to do everything they could to procure resources? Wouldn't that make them more assertive, more aggressive in order to procure those resources? And in doing so, create the, like manifest the world that we live in, the roads and the infrastructure and the buildings and the electricity. Uh, again, I'm not saying, do you understand what I'm saying? My, my, my point is this, is like, like the reason why men are so assertive and end up dominating so many industries in the world is because they're trying to fucking impress women yes do you understand and if women weren't selective we'd still be living in caves that's the difference every single every single large accomplishment that has happened the invention of the transistor even do even relativity like like uh, uh albert einstein discovers all relativity. guys trying to get in yeah there. He, he, uh, albert einstein <laughs> how do a, i get in there? a great example <laughs> einstein einstein gets a it won a nobel prize for the photoelectric effect and he <laughs> and he does general in, in uh special relativity and then he ends up like dating a bunch of like beautiful women apparently he, he supposedly fucked uh, Marilyn Monroe at one point like that's what ends up happening right <laughs> everybody does it Steve Jobs was dating multiple supermodels you obviously see uh, you know Elon Musk has kids with like nine different people at this point the all these accomplished were which were done by men to become assertive and aggressive to impress women so because why is that is it, is it because women think of this in a vacuum no it's because women 
whenever surveyed, are more, and this is, by the way, it's a 37 culture study, and every one of these cultures, women were more interested, significantly more interested, in a man's ability to procure resources, especially in like Middle Eastern countries, mm. South American countries, not as much in places like funny, Norway. Funny you should say that. I've got, I've, you don't even have to go back to 2016. You can get it right now today in 2023. Um, couples in which the woman is the only earner report lower life satisfaction. Yes, like well, it's very common for when a woman out starts to a, out earn a man for divorce to, to yes. soon follow. Many That's women right. will at least temporarily be the breadwinner at some point in the relationship. Changing employment trends and gender roles will affect many households, but our new peer-reviewed study shows that for heterosexual couples, well-being is lower when the woman is the sole earner versus the man who is the breadwinner or if both parties are employed. And this has happened a lot because all of a sudden you have girls, you know, since 2019 get on OF and they're making, you know, 20K. Way Listen, more. like for some girls, 20K a month seems like nothing, right? That's not, not that much. Oh, 100K a month is not a big deal. But 100K a month that when the average man in the United States makes, anybody? Seventy-five. Thirty-seven. Oh boy, God, I wish it was seventy-five. Thirty-nine thousand dollars a year. That's average. Yes. Yeah. Thirty-nine. Look, look at Jesse's face. Thirty-nine thousand a year. Thirty-nine thousand a year. How do you live off that. And you're and you're and you're and you're, and you're pulling even ten k a month of of OF, right? Of course, OF is going to take two thousand, so eight k a month of OF. It's still. So you're making above the poverty, like above the poverty line in one lump. In one month. Correct. Mm -hmm. So you, you, do you guys understand the issue? Yeah. That That's the problem. So now yeah. all of a sudden you have the girls who will go off and do this. And now we have an issue where all of a sudden the, the wage gap changes to the, to the other way where women are making so much money and it, become, it puts some stress on the relationship. I've seen this happen many times.